Welcome once again to the Death Row and Executions channel. I am Paco Rivera. Near the end of January last month, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed a death warrant for 59-year-old death row inmate Donald David Dilbeck. The execution is scheduled to take place on February 23rd. Except for a brief period when Dilbeck escaped from prison, he's been locked up since he was 15 years old since 1979 in April of the year 1979 15 year old Donald Dilbeck was a runaway from Indiana where he was living with his parents that adopted him when he was six years old Dilbeck had just dropped out of high school and he made his way to Fort Myers Beach in Florida the young teenager had stabbed a man in Anderson Indiana when he was caught trying to steal a CB radio out of a car by the car's owner, a man named Philip Reeder. How many of you out there remember CB radios during the 1970s? Anyway, Mr. Reeder survived the attack and gave a full description of Donald Dilbeck to police, and Dilbeck fled from the state. In Fort Myers, Florida, Dilbeck was sitting in a car in a parking lot near the beach in an area that was closed for the night when he was approached by Lee County Deputy Sheriff Dwight Lynn Hall. When Deputy Hall confronted Dilbeck, the teenager got out of the car and ran. The deputy chased after him and caught up to Dilbeck, who violently resisted. During the struggle, both of them ended up on the ground and Dilbeck was able to grab a hold of the deputy's gun. Dilbeck shot twice and the officer was killed. Dilbeck then ran off again on foot. Other officers responding to distress calls arrived on the scene, set up a perimeter, and soon after the shooting, the teenager was captured and arrested. Donald Dilbeck confessed. Two months later, after Dilbeck had just turned 16 years old, he pled guilty and received a life sentence with the possibility of parole that would begin at the Sumter Correctional Institution in Bushnell, Florida. 11 years later, in June of the year 1990, Donald Dilbeck was now incarcerated at the Quincy Vocational Center in Quincy, Florida. And according to some reports in this case, he was considered at the time as a model prisoner. He was participating in a work detail program offered to such inmates, where they are allowed to leave the prison in groups to perform various jobs at a certain site. However, while some had considered Dilbeck as a model prisoner, other reports show the following. In 1983, Dilbeck attempted an escape from prison, but was captured immediately. In 1984, he was disciplined for assaulting another inmate with a handmade knife. In 1985, he was punished for receiving and consuming alcohol, a prison contraband, while he was still incarcerated. These work detail programs are common with prison inmates in many jurisdictions throughout the United States. Many of you might have seen such men, for instance, cleaning up trash alongside roadways and highways while driving your car. It is also commonly referred to as a furlough program. With some prisons, the inmate is supervised uh, by prison officials and in other circumstances, the inmate is simply allowed to leave the prison and told to return by a certain time. In this case, Donald Dilbeck was part of a supervised group and one article states that the corrections officers responsible for him were all fired and other officials of the prison where Dilbeck was serving time were suspended. In a moment, you will know why. Donald Dilbeck, now 27 years old and still serving out his life sentence for killing a cop in 1979, was working with the catering people at a special event taking place at the Gretna Elementary School, a short distance away from Quincy, on June 22, 1990. The banquet at Gretna Elementary was for members of the North Florida Educational Development Corporation, 
And according to reports, most of those attending were senior citizens. Donald Dilbeck was transported to Gretna Elementary about 6.30 that evening, and during the event, he decided to sneak out of there, essentially making his escape. And he made his way east to Tallahassee, Florida, approximately 25 miles away. At 8.15 that night, a corrections officer at Gretna Elementary reported that Donald Dilbeck was missing. And by 8.25, that same officer reported that he had escaped. Donald Dilbeck would later confess that during the night he was back in the Quincy area and stole some clothing hanging from a clothesline to dry. He changed and later left to Tallahassee. Donald Dilbeck must have had some money on him or he obtained some money somehow because at some point he stopped at a store and bought a paring knife. Two days after Donald Dilbeck's escape, on June 24th, 1990, at about 2.30 in the afternoon, a woman named Faye Lamb Ban, who was 44 years old, parked her car in the Tallahassee Mall's parking lot. Today, that place is known as the center of Tallahassee Shopping Mall. Faye had dropped off her older children at the mall where they were going to exchange some clothing at the Gafers store before heading over to a lake by the park for a picnic that day. Because Faye was wearing only a t-shirt over her bathing suit, she didn't think it was appropriate to enter the mall dressed like that, and she remained in the car waiting for her children. Donald Dilbeck approached that car, forced himself inside, and ordered Faye to drive away from there. As she drove, witnesses reported that she was crying out for help and honking her horn repeatedly and desperately. Delbick panicked and stabbed Faye with the paring knife at least 20 times. The car crashed into a wall of the mall. Delbick got out of the car and fled on foot. A mall security guard witnessed the incident and chased Delbeck while notifying his dispatch for help. Police were notified, arrived in the area, and soon after found Delbeck in the backyard of a house still in possession of the bloody knife. About a year later, Donald Dilbeck was tried and convicted for the murder of Faye Van in Tallahassee and he was sentenced to death in Florida's electric chair, the manner in which executions were carried out in Florida at the time, meaning he's been on death row now for 31 years. Back in Fort Myers, Lynn Hall Memorial Park on Fort Myers Beach was named after the deputy that lost his life there when he had confronted Donald Dilbeck in 1979. Please remember to subscribe for more death row and upcoming execution stories. I am Paco Rivera. Bye for now.